We are so excited um, to introduce and have um, Ashe coming back. He was here on Tuesday and got us around the, the stories behind our name to really warm up us into this session. He's being joined by his wonderful colleague, Laura. Um, and we are ecstatic to have the both of you here. You were introduced to us by the wonderful Tina. Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And sorry we're late, but we were so inspired and passionate in our uh, kickoff session. But I am thrilled to finally have this come to life. We've been talking about it for a while, right, Laura? Actually, I think us all being yeah. based in Southern California, we have that connection going. And I'm so excited to, to see what you all are going to do today. Love it. Love it. Love it. And so awesome. with the well, yeah, please. Well, awesome. Thanks. And we'll take it from here. And uh, thanks for having us. First of all, um, yeah, just a quick reintroduction. Akshay Satish, founder of Zixana Consulting. We're a leadership development firm uh, that activates the world of work through play. We'll talk more about that as we get rolling here. And I'm joined by my co-facilitator and designer of play, Laura Fleeg, um, today. We're going to be uh, going back and forth between ourselves. Um, and Liz, you're going to be hanging out with us, too. Uh, so yep. we'll do some fun stuff at the front of the room. Uh, and we're, it's going to be quite interactive. We'll be going back and forth in, uh, you know, the, the table talks, etc., cetera, uh, to uh, do some activities, to play some games together. And then every time we do that, I want to just let you know that we'll come back to this main room and we'll discuss what happened and, and learn from you kind of what your experience was. Uh, and so that's that's kind of the flow of today. Uh, we've got quite a bit of time to, together to discuss play as learning. And we attended the, a little bit of the uh, opening session uh, talking about Tiagi and games and serious play, et cetera. And, and I think I think as a quick summary there, I think over the over the last 20 years, 30 years or so, definitely the language, I think somebody said the language matters. Uh, and I think one of the things that we found in our work is that whenever we talk to people about play, they sometimes ask us, "Well, can you call it something else? Uh, because I can't sell it to my uh, sell it to, to 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 my boss or whatever." Um, and it's a really fascinating um, discussion uh, because uh, fundamentally, uh, I think uh, uh, somebody else said it uh, was that really what we're trying to do underlying everything is to reinvigorate, reeducate adults of the value of play. And so we're hoping to give you that experience today uh, as a group, albeit virtually, uh, it still works. Uh, and so we're gonna, we're gonna get rolling there. Laura, anything to add to for setting the stage for today? Yeah, I think just um, something to think about as we go into all of this is the idea of play as learning. And just as we go throughout today and we're asking you to play some improv games that maybe you've never played before, maybe you have, that it's really an opportunity to see how you respond to ambiguity, uh, to being asked to be creative in the moment. And it's a really great opportunity to kind of reflect on how you show up in those moments and, and practice uh, being courageous and trying something, maybe failing at it on some level. That's really what today is all about as well. And to create a safe space uh, where we can connect through the fact that we're all human and we're not perfect. Uh, and it's just could be fun. And one of the things I think we'll open with, thanks, Laura, for that. That's absolutely right. I think we're asking you to bring some courage. I think that's what the beauty of this group is, is that there's safety in it already. Uh, and that anything we do is, uh, is gonna be acceptable. And, and we're gonna open with a game pretty quickly right now um, I don't want to uh, uh, switch to the next slide because it'll give it away. Uh, but I do think that uh, what we need to set up for it is that uh, first, you need to have a pencil or pen and paper handy. We're going analog in this virtual uh, conference. Uh, so be ready for this next game coming up uh, with a piece of paper. A scrap piece of paper is fine. Um, and one of the things that we we like to do in this first game is Pay attention, like Laura said, pay attention to how you show up and what are the things that you're doing, even unconsciously, when you engage in play. And so uh, let's let's get started to set the stage. So the first game we're going to play is called Draw Your Neighbor, but you're not going to do it here. You're going to go into your table talks and it's set into a game time table talk. And you're only going to have about three minutes. Whoever's there, you're going to have 
three minutes to basically finish this activity. It's super short. In fact, you only have 30 seconds to do the drawing. And here's the instruction. And then you're going to be sent away to the table talks. And that is take somebody that you're looking at in the screen in your table talks, and you're going to draw their face. Okay. Draw their face 30 seconds. Stop what you're doing all at once. Share the share the drawing in the in the camera uh, to show. Oh wow, good job! <laughs> and so yeah, and so that's and so you're going to share it and laugh a little bit and talk about it. Then you can come back here and we'll tell you what was that all about. So here we go. Table talks. Be ready with a pencil, pen, and paper. Draw your neighbor. Go go to it. Go to it. Table talks. We'll see you in here in a couple of minutes. Perfect. All right. You should have all received an alert and we are pausing this session and go draw. All right. Do, do, do. All good to go. Hey, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, I mean, that was fast. It was super fast. And hopefully you had your you, you know, your, your pins warmed up. Uh, and so this will this will wake you up in some form. Um, we're, I want to talk a little bit about that game. Um, and hopefully you had some smiles on your faces as you shared it, or laughing and, and, and kind of curious about what we're doing. Um, Tina was joined, uh, stayed with us here, um, and played the activity. Uh, Tina, any, any thoughts about what, what you thought of the activity initially, just kind of what your experience was, and then we'll talk about what we observed Tina do and talk about what the purpose of that game is. Yeah, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and I've done something similar in person, but it was neat to be able to do it virtually. Yeah, and awesome. it made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, great, great. We laugh too. We always, we always, as receivers, we're always laughing. Um, <laughs> so, so one of the things that's interesting. So this game actually comes from a, a creativity a, a person from Stanford University named Bob McKim. And he designed this game as a very simple game to get people to think about uh, how they show up and specifically adults. Now, I didn't ask Tina this question, but I'll put her on the spot. Tina, um, if you have uh, you have kids or if, you, if you're a mom or if you're an aunt or whatever, if, if a child came home with this drawing, what do we usually do with that drawing, the, the, whatever it looks like? What do we do with it? Do you, do you know? Um, we put it on the refrigerator for a couple of days and then sneak it into the recycle bin. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, totally that's the answer. Exactly. <laughs> uh, that's totally what I do. And, and, and why do we put it on the fridge or what do we say and do uh, for to, to, to the kids? Why do we do that? Why do we kind of celebrate that? I guess is what you're saying. Because of the effort um, yeah. and, and the creativity or just the, the thought that went into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we really want to encourage whatever they are kind of putting out there, right? Um, and so I have a question, uh, you know, think about for yourselves, everybody, and I, I know this happened for Tina, so she can uh, say it. Uh, think about everybody. Think about if you were on camera and, and on, on, on your mic in your table talks, how, how many of you apologized or disclaimered while you were doing the drawing uh, or even after you're showing it, hey, I'm sorry, you know, oh, this isn't my best work. Um, you know, I haven't done this in many years. Anything that you may have said or thought as a disclaimer or an apology to this activity, it's really fascinating. Look at how many people are saying me. Tina, you apologized to Laura while you were drawing and you said, I'm sorry, um, you know, this has no reflection on you. <laughs> um, and so, and why, why do you think you apologize, Tina? Any thoughts there? I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but. Uh, yeah, um, because I'm, I'm not in any way a skilled artist and I felt like right. she looked a bit monstrous, um, to be honest. It was sad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's beautiful, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and that's that's awesome. And so one of the things to think about, as we mentioned, while you're playing, because we're going to be playing a number of games here, we want you to start taking notice of what you're doing in the approach of the game, let alone the actual game itself. Mm -hmm. What we talk about in our work is that the way adults show up in a game can be a mirror to how they show up in the work setting. 
And so when you're thinking about your career and how you interview and how you present yourself, uh, you want to start thinking about yourselves in terms of how am I motivated in games and playfulness? And how can I mirror that or understand how to emulate that if, if it's a productive one in the work setting? Bob and Kim talks about three fears that adults have in this game and in general. One, fear of judgment. Now, actually, what's interesting about that is that the fear of judgment is I actually judge myself in this activity sometimes. Like, I'm actually not that good at this. Well, the argument is you, this is the best you have in the 30 seconds that we gave you. And so that is what you want to lead with when you enter into play. You want to say, we don't know. I don't know. I've never done this game. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but this is the best I have. I'm going to sort of own that and put it out mm. there. The second fear Bob Mason talks about is the fear of failure. Just that, you know, I, it's not going to, you know, where is this going to go? I mean, look at this drawing. I mean, is it, are we going to enter it into a contest? Is this going to, uh, am I going to fail uh, by sharing it with somebody and potentially offending them, right? Uh, and so those are some thoughts that we have to prevent us from really putting our all into an activity like this. And the final um, is really the fear of not looking good. You know, I've got this credibility about me. I've got um, some confidence in yesterday about empowerment and, and thinking about who am I. And if there's a risk of that not presenting itself, I actually, and Tina, you said you were a little anxious at first, and then you were like, I can do this, and you talked yourself into it. And so there's that component of hedging against not looking good in front of others. And that last point I want to hold on to as we go through the rest of today, and that is when you're playing and we're trying to learn, looking good and looking good in front of other people actually is going to prevent you from stretching mm. yourself to take mm. on learning. Mm. In fact, being vulnerable and not knowing and uh, kind of experimenting with thoughts and ideas is where the learning occurs. And so what we want to do to create that environment, because that's important, where it's a supportive environment, no matter what you say and do here, is acceptable. We don't, may not have mm. to agree with it. We may not actually do anything about it. We want you to hold on to this, draw your neighbor, you know, think about no apologies for the rest of today or the rest of this workshop at the very least. Mm -hmm. uh, just share and say what you need to and that will be a playful mirror to how we can engage with each other as we go forward. So thank you. Thank you for playing. Thank you for playing Draw Your Neighbor. Thanks Tina for um, debriefing with us at the front of the room. Yes. So let's uh, move forward uh, and Laura is going to walk us through kind of, uh, you know, who we are and, and, and kind of get us to what we're going to cover today. Uh, more specifically, this is more of an opening um, to the workshop. So go ahead, take it away, Laura. Thanks, Akshay. Yeah, something I think I read this maybe two days ago as well about Draw Your Neighbor is that most of us draw at about a seven-year-old level because that's when we start getting the perception that our stuff isn't good enough. So many of us, our drawing capacity is actually stunted at the time when we learned that it wasn't good enough. So that's that's the reason often why our drawing skills are not even as good as children's is because we're starting to learn that, you know, we weren't good at it. So we stopped trying to advance. So thought that was a really interesting fact. Uh, this slide right here, this is actually our wall uh, at Sixana. This is in our office. And like I said, this is what we've been doing uh, for 10 years is bringing this kind of work, this kind of playful learning into corporate spaces. And what we really see is that play does three things. Uh, the first thing is that it connects people to each other. So when we bring play into organizations, one of the things we're trying to do is to get people to connect authentically and vulnerably. Uh, the second thing is that it makes people more comfortable taking risks. So. If you think about organizations, a lot of times uh, things just stay the same because nobody wants to do something different. Nobody really wants to take a risk. Uh, and when we bring play in, we're getting them to experiment and practice trying something new and seeing that nobody dies from it. Uh, and the final thing is the openness to possibilities. Uh, so when you're playing, there's really no limitation on what's possible and what's acceptable. And we also find that that mindset is really helpful 
we bring play in to help executives create a new vision, a new culture uh, for their team. And play is really the vehicle for that. So there's an openness to new possibilities and seeing what could be. And the next slide we're gonna show you is uh, our whole reason for existence. Uh, we call this our played activity framework. And this is really a visual representation of our philosophy. Uh, and that is that at work, in the world of work, uh, we need both productivity and play. And if you look at most of us adults, uh, we tend to live on the left side of that loop. And if you spend all your time in productivity mode, you get burnt out, right? However, a lot of people think, well, work is about getting results. And yes, that's true. But we say you can't just live on that left side of the loop. You have to go to the right side if you want to have a healthy culture, if you want to work in a sustainable way, if you want to have a successful team. It's really all about learning how to balance productivity and play. And this is our framework that we use for organizations to help them develop new cultures. We use this to train leaders. We ask them which side of the loop do you live on? You can even write that in the chat box right now. Kind of reflect how much of your time do you spend on productivity versus play on a daily basis? And our work is really all about helping people balance uh, these, these two spheres in their work. And you'll even see on the side there, there's now some polarities. And this is really about saying we need this and this. So we need professional connection at work. Professionalism is important, but so is being socially connected, authentically connection, connected, casually connected to people, right? You need to manage your priorities, right? But you also need to manage your energy. In fact, we, we talk more about energy management than priority management a lot of the time, because if you don't have the right energy for something, your results aren't gonna be as good. So as we go throughout today, uh, we're gonna use this on in our philosophy of how we do these games. You'll notice that after we play a game, we talk about how it's related to a work-related outcome, right? So we played Draw Your Neighbor, and then we talked about what is the significance of this? There's something we can learn here about making mistakes, right? Or how we show up, how we apologize. And that could help me be better at my work. So we're always connecting play and productivity. And this is our uh, played activity loop. Yes, absolutely, play with a purpose. That definitely uh, summarizes what we're doing here. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, so the we already talked a lot about what we're doing today. The first thing is, first objective is just to connect authentically with other people. That's what these games are all about. Uh, the second thing that we're going to talk about is how play specifically helps you develop three skills that are really valuable on the job market, and especially in learning and development. Uh, and the final thing we're going to talk about is the ways that you're already practicing this in your life unknowingly. Uh, we all have different ways that we like to play. And when you think about your life and the things that you love to do, those things are actually helping you develop skills for career development. Uh, and we're gonna talk about how that's possible and how you can keep playing more. And uh, the three skills we're gonna be talking about today are creativity, adaptability, and collaboration. Uh, and we didn't just pull these out of thin air. Uh, so we look at LinkedIn and McKinsey from 2020 and 2021, and we look through their list of uh, the soft skills that are most needed in organizations, and we came up with uh, one, one, and one. They're all equally important, creativity, adaptability, and collaboration. Uh, and we're going to go through each one of these skills today and talk about uh, why it's valuable in organizations and then how you can practice it as well. Actually, anything to add to these skills? Yeah, just that uh, it's so serendipitous that they all came down from Google Slides to PowerPoint download as number one, one, one. Like they're all, <laughs> they're not prioritized here. Uh, we're going to go through them in that order of uh, top to bottom, but uh, we do believe that they are pretty important. So yeah, just a funny, fun, funny moment. Thanks. <laughs> So the first thing we're gonna talk about today is creativity. Uh, and to talk about creativity and what it is, uh, we have a story for you about Plato. Uh, and some of you may know it, some of you may not. Uh, but Plato actually used to be a wall cleaner in the 1920s. So it was a company called Kutal, and they were a wall cleaner because in the 1920s, uh, in your house, it was often heated with coal. So you'd end up with soot all over your wall. And coming out of the 1920s, a cleaner energy started to be developed 
So people no longer needed to clean soot off of their walls. So uh, Kutal was becoming obsolete. The company was going under, people no longer needed it. And what happened is the company's founder, his uh, sister-in-law was a preschool teacher. And she said to him, you know, my preschoolers actually love building stuff out of the wall cleaner. And he took that idea and he ran with it and he turned it into a children's toy that we all know as Play-Doh today. And what I love about this story is that it was actually the kids who were innovative in this, right? We could look at the company founder and yeah, he did a good job being on board, but it was the kids who saw something that was wall cleaner and didn't have any boundaries around what it could be, right? They had, they saw it and they were just like, I wanna build something out of this, I don't care what it is. And that's really what creativity is all about. You can look at that Albert Einstein quote, creativity is seeing what everyone else has seen and thinking what no one else has thought. Right? How can we have an original thought about something that it's, we usually put it in a box? And for companies, I really like this study, uh, 1,400 CEOs across 79 countries said that they struggle to find the creativity and innovation skills they need. And innovation is like a, a huge buzzword uh, today. Companies, many of them are looking for things that are, are new, that are different, that help them stand out. Uh, and being able to think outside the box is a skill that can help us get there. And the final bullet point on there is just talking about uh, the way that play, especially imaginative play, is correlated with divergent thinking, which is very closely related to creativity. And with um, divergent thinking, if you think about convergent thinking, which is the opposite, it's all about finding one right answer. Whereas divergent thinking is about finding as many possibilities as you possibly can and then maybe trying a couple of them, but there's really no right or wrong answer. And that's what we're gonna invite you to practice uh, in our next game. Awesome, yeah, so we're ready to play the next game and I love this image that's a gif, I guess. It's just uh, <laughs> makes me laugh every time I look at it. Um, and so uh, here's, what we're, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna get, in a moment, we're gonna go back to table talks, uh, but before we do, we're gonna demonstrate the game that you're gonna play in your table talks, okay? And this game specifically is going to hopefully exercise the muscle of creativity. Uh, and so here's the game. It's it's called What Are You Doing? Uh, and it looks like Laura and I are here, so we'll just demo it together, Laura, um, and go back and forth, and, and we'll kind of tee it up for everybody else. Oh, here's comes Liz. Yes, yeah, so we wanted one more. <laughs> Thanks, Liz, for coming back, I love it. doing a demo here. Okay, so de demonstrating the game. Here we go. So what are you doing? So I'll. So the first thing that you want to do in this game, in your table talk, is establish the order of operation, meaning I'll go first, and then maybe mm -hmm. if, if Laura, you can go second, and then Liz, and then I, it'll come back to me, okay? It's kind of like a round robin type of thing. Okay. Um, and so establish the order. The second thing is the first person's going to start. And the first person's just going to do something uh, that is actually real, like just mime an activity, okay? So, for example, I'm going to start. Okay, so here we go. Akshay, what are you doing? And then what I'm going to say is not what I'm exactly doing, which it looks like I'm brushing my teeth, right? But I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say something completely different, such as uh, preparing dinner. And then, Can I try? Yeah. And then Laura, the second person, is gonna take what I said, preparing dinner, and it's gonna mime that. Now she's uh, miming preparing dinner. And now Liz, it's your turn to ask Laura the title of the uh, game, what are you doing? Go ahead, Liz. Hey, Laura, what are you doing? I'm feeding the penguins. Oh, you're feeding the penguins? There you go, Liz. You got to feed oh. those penguins. She's feeding <laughs> whatever Liz is eating, she's feeding it to the penguins. Uh, Liz, what are you doing? Oh, I'm preparing for a presentation um, from the president. I'm going to be talking to him in an hour. Oh. Akshay, what are you doing? Oh, I'm driving a truck. Can I try? Yeah. Oh, so cool. there you have it. Hey, good job. Give yourselves a round of applause up here at the stage. Thank you for joining me. So that's the demo. So as you can see, what are you doing is the question that you asked the previous person. Set up the order of operations in your table talk so you know who's going next. 
ask, what are you doing now? So for some of you, it's not going to be so easy. Some of you will be easier. That's okay. Have some fun with it. You're going to spend quite a bit of time there. Um, and so you're going to hang out there for a little while, play as many rounds as possible, laugh a little bit together. And we'll see you back here. When you come back, we're going to invite some people on stage with us to talk about what happened. How did it go? What was easy? What was hard? We'll see you soon. Have fun at the table talks with what are you doing? I love it. All right, everyone, you should have re received an announcement. Go follow that link and we will see you soon. Okay, okay, welcome back. You're rolling in here. Awesome. Welcome back. Welcome back. Awesome. Uh, we're hoping that you had some fun with that um, <laughs> and also potentially noticed your capacity, propensity, uh, your hesitation to engage. That's always an interesting part. You know, we get asked a lot of questions when we go into organizations. You know, how do you deal with the skeptics is mm. our classic question, which then begs me to ask, wait, are you, ask are you asking from a skeptic perspective or are you the skeptic or, <laughs> uh, or tell us more? And so we, we, we tend to actually answer that question interestingly um, by saying that, you know, generally we honor the skeptics. We want mm. people to ask and question what we're doing. That's the point of it. Playfulness and play isn't comfortable for everybody mm. at, in the adult kind of uh, space and isn't comfortable, as we started to talk about um, earlier, when we've kind of lost that connection to play and what the utility is. Uh, and so it's an interesting uh, thing, interesting to talk about it. And I think one of the things that we found that is useful is really truth telling. And that is the skeptics are, are, are great in the room. We don't want to mm. ignore them. We want to invite them in to help mm. understand how to connect the dots between what we're doing and what the utility or the application is to their world or to mm. the group's world. And I think as soon as we start to do that, it, it, it doesn't become about play. It becomes about the application of it to help people get to where they want to go. Um, and so that, that's one tip or one thought to think about. Speaking of that, We'd love to invite a couple of you, maybe three of you up on stage with us. Um, just raise your hand if you're interested, or we'll just kind of force you on stage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> you still have to accept the mic. Exactly. So y'all yeah, will see in the middle of your screen, there's a hand. So um, yeah. we look for all oh, awesome. We already have a hand raise. Ah, oh, the wonderful Ashley. Yeah, come on up, Ashley. Thanks. And then maybe one or two more, if you don't mind raising your hand, that'd be great. We want to just hear from you. We're not um, going to make you uh, do, do anything, any other games. Uh, we want to hear from you what your experience was. So we've got Stu um, and Ashley. I don't see Ashley anymore. Uh, so one of the problems Stu. just is that we um, we can only get one person on stage at a time. We haven't figured oh, out God. why. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. The next topic yeah. that we're going to talk about in a moment is adaptability. So we'll talk about we'll exactly. that. Exactly. Hey, Stu, thanks for joining us here, and thanks for playing in the table talk. Can you just tell us how what was that experience like of playing? What are you doing, and and, and what 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 would you get from that, or what, what are you learning from that as you walk away from the table talk there? So it was big fun. It was it was absolutely big fun. Uh, I had two very very wonderful people in my group, and uh, yeah, uh, if if I had to say there was a challenge uh, in playing the game, it was yeah. that uh, the further we got into it, we the more we forgot that we were playing a game. Ooh. And uh, and just started watching the other person's mime for like way too long. Like it was my turn. <laughs> I was supposed yeah. to take over, and I'm like, oh, I'm just watching this. this is <laughs> right. Fantastic, right? With we were playing this game in relationship to the topic or skill of creativity. Any thoughts mm -hmm. there of, of of kind of the connection between the two and and what you're kind of thinking about? I think what I like about this one in terms of creativity is, I think. And this is, I guess, my own perspective, but I think a yeah. lot of people kind of will start this game with a, with a short list in their head of, okay, here's what I'm going to do when it is yes. my turn. But yes. with it being so rapid fire and with it being so engaging and, and laughter filled, um, either you run out of that list or you forget that list real quick and right. then you have to jump in on, on the moment. Love that. 
Love that. Excellent. Thanks for saying that. Absolutely. And that, that'll tag nicely into what we're talking about next. So thank you, Stu. Thanks for coming up on stage, Stu. Uh, you know, I'm going to do an analog uh, uh, thing uh, here, and then we'll ask uh, other people to come up. Thanks so much, Stu, uh, and, and looking forward to playing with you a little bit more as we go forward. Uh, let's have one more person, Liz, if you don't mind. I think that was, um, it was somebody. Oh, Ashley, there you are. Thanks, Ashley. Come yeah. on up. Tell us about your experience, Ashley. Thanks for playing. I was with <laughs> Stu. Oh, there yeah, it is. It was, it was the magic table. The we magic both table. had a great time. All three of us we were with Christine as well. But from a facilitational aspect, I was looking at the exercise as how I can assimilate it into what the organizations are feeling and doing and mm. experiencing today. Yeah. That I yeah. found like one of my challenges was so focused on what they're, they're said doesn't match what they were doing mm. that it's hard right. like a monotonous task that we all have that we get in this rhythm to really bring back innovation and creativity in what we do daily or coming up with new ideas that weren't re-saying what you were trying to do so those two kind of left brain right brain fighting each other moments mm. which I really like which pushes organizations today and it's yes. like if you see a challenge is here but habitually you can get more in a mm -hmm. rhythm the more you play the more you do things that it only can bring more creativity, innovation, you know, forward thinking, creative design to any type of organization. So I yeah. thought that was what I liked is what I would bring it back in a facilitation. Love moment. that. Absolutely. Love that. Thanks for saying that, Ashley. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I think that's one thing that you do want to think about everybody is that, you know, when we see something that's familiar to us, um, it's hard for us because we've trained ourselves based on just flight or flight, you know, uh, you know, how we are like we we know that, the, you know, this is shooting a basketball, you know, even yeah. though there's no real basketball in my hand right now. Um, it just seems that way because we have kind of created a story around um, what that is. And we can kind of lend this self to kind of biases and things like that that we have exactly. as well. Unconsciously around what kind we of already know. Right. And so changing that is what you're saying is kind of taking that moment to see if there's something else that could be. Laura talked about play brings the openness to possibilities. And and that is what the goal is of this activity. If you're doing another activity where we just said, just tell it like it is, then you would just yeah. say, yeah, you know, yeah, and diverse hey, thinking thinking is that edge mm -hmm. of where we need to be. So that's one thing I really looked at it from an educational standpoint as well. Love it. The Love joy it. and fun. Laura, any I thoughts, uh, any thoughts here to add on to Ashley? I think she's on to something here. Any thoughts uh, from you that you wanted to say? Uh, in addition? No. Oh, awesome. perfect, Laura. I got hey, it. Ashley, <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much for playing Anytime. and thanks for uh, engaging on stage here with, with us. Course. We appreciate it. We'll see you in the in the table thank talks you. and more playing to come. We okay. love Ashley. The last 2.0, she was our master of disaster for the warm-ups and um sessions, and it was awesome. And she, she did something I with her. I love to play. So I also love awesome. that education love moment. So thank you. Love it. Thank you. Talk thank to you, you. Soon. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Definitely not a skeptic in Ashley, I think, <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, I think I think that's one thing to think about. You know, creativity, and we'll talk about this again one more time at the end. It's funny because a lot of organizations may think of, you know, well, we want you to be creative. Hmm. We need you to be creative now about this or innovative, whatever the words are, because some of the language is different depending on the culture and the values. Um and so how do you do that? Like, is it just an on off switch that we have to now turn on and off? Because you just asked me last week to be super productive and just get stuff done. Right. Uh, and so there's some interesting things to think about culturally um, in that. How do organizations foster creativity? How do they allow it and enable it and permit it and where and how? Because it doesn't need to exist everywhere. However, first it needs to exist. Do I have a practice of my own, uh, which we'll talk about play preferences at the end, but do I know how to be creative on my own? And then are there opportunities for me to practice that skill? That's kind of the question that we're asking. And, um, and so that's something to, to think about as we, uh, as we kind of straddle moving forward here. Laura, now anything else to add here before we move to the next topic? Yeah, I think if you just think back to the loop really quickly, the played activity loop, the play on the right side, productivity on the left, even when we talk about, because we do an innovation program, we talk about creativity existing on the right and then targeted execution existing on the left, 
right? So in order to be an innovative team or organization, it's not all about creativity. It's about being creative, but then also being able to execute. Uh, so just think another way to apply the loop as uh, to this topic. Yeah, love that. Love that. Awesome. Thanks, Laura, for bringing that back. Absolutely. So we're going to move forward to the next uh, subject, which is on adaptability. I think we even spoke a little, we even tied some loose knots here um, as we move forward. Laura, you want to walk us through what we what, what we need to learn here? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just tell you all a little story about a time I wasn't adaptable first. Uh, adaptability isn't something that I'm naturally amazing at. Uh, it's definitely a practice. And this field has been great for that, right? Because in the learning and development field, so much adaptability, right? You can have a plan that's six pages long and then you show up and you have to do something completely different, right? Being able to serve the moment. Uh, but there was a time um, when I worked for a restaurant that changed their menu and their concept uh, about once every two weeks. They completely changed what the restaurant was about, what they were trying to do. The menu would change and I would go in for my shifts and they'd be like, hey, yeah, just throw out the old thing. Like, here's, here's your new concept and this is what you're going to be telling guests tonight. And for a while, I was like, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, I'll just I'll switch on my story. But this went on for so long that I guess I wasn't conscious of this, but I started to get a pretty bad attitude <laughs> about all these changes. And uh, eventually they fired me because they're like, yeah, you just don't really seem like you're going along with what we're doing. I was like, of course I'm not. You change your concept every two weeks. But it was, it was a really good lesson in just the nature of work sometimes and life, as we know. Uh, is that it changes sometimes so rapidly and it can be frustrating. You're like, oh my gosh, I have to do something different again. Mm -hmm. And really adaptability is not just about being like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll sell the, I'll, I'll do the new thing. It's actually about capitalizing on it, right? So making the best out of it. So adaptability is not only accepting that something has to change, it's making the best of it. And research shows that people who are playful uh, who have playfulness as a personality trait are also more adaptable. And I really like the researchers point on why they think that is. It's because people who love to play, who seek out play, they put themselves in situations where they don't know what they're doing, right? They love to play and they love to experiment and connect with people and see what's possible so much that they put themselves in uncomfortable situations because they wanna have fun, right? Mm -hmm. They see these situations that they don't know how to navigate as okay because they're just having fun. They're not afraid of failing. I'm just going to go with the flow because I want to have a good time. And this isn't all of us, uh, but luckily it's something we can practice. And playing, uh, and especially the next game that we're going to do, is a great way. Even in the game, what are you doing? You had to adapt in the moment, right? Maybe somebody was doing this and then somebody was doing something different. And I like, like Stu said, you have to be present. And you have to say yes to what's happening in front of you and go with it. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing in our next game. The final point on there that I like, too, is that research has shown that people who have career adaptability, who have been able to have multiple careers and transition into them, they're actually more satisfied with their careers. So as we're in this uh, time, middle of strangeness uh, and talking about career development, it can almost be seen as an opportunity uh, to practice adapting. I think really adaptability becomes so important or, or helpful when we see it as an opportunity to see what's possible uh, rather than something that, oh gosh, like I'm gonna resist this because I don't know what to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. I think one thing I would add here is that, uh, you know, folks, I think I've been hearing the word resilience a lot more and it's been, you know, it's not, it's not a new word necessarily. Um, it's just that I think for, from my perspective, and this is just uh, kind of me thinking out loud, you know, adaptability is a skill that you could try to practice that I think leads to an eventual outcome of resilience potentially in, in different scenarios, et cetera. And so if I, you know, I always like to back it up, like we, we oh, I want to be resilient. I, I am so resilient. Yet I feel like, well, what am I going to do to become that or be that or emulate that? And so I, I like to boil it down a little bit and say, well, is there something around how do I practice something that can get me uh, to, to, to become more resilient? To me, adaptability could be a skill that we could try to practice more um, and see where we're more adaptable and where we're not. I love that story that you had 
Laura, about the, the restaurant. And, and in those situations, maybe there's a limit to your adaptability, right? <laughs> uh, and that, you know, that, could, that could, could be totally be true, but a learning moment at that. So let's uh, do it. Had a yeah, go ahead. Tina had a question, actually. Um, and I'm wondering yeah. if you can speak to this. Tina said, the, unpredictabil the unpredictability is really hard for some especially neurodiverse learners, how can we make sure the play activities are inclusive or their researches or, oh, wow, this is amazing, or research around that? Yeah, so, uh, so, so unpredictability. So one of the things that, and so there's a couple of ways I answer this. So number one, um, that when we ask people to play or use play as a learning vehicle, we actually don't require everybody to play. So that actually in any situation, we literally just say, if you feel like you're not comfortable participating, just step back and observe. Don't leave the room. We usually like don't leave. <laughs> However, uh, just see what happens. And the permission granting upfront from a leader or facilitator enables people to participate in the way that they are comfortable and in fact, that actually mirrors the definition of play. There are, by the way, many definitions of play itself. The simplest one that we like to get to as fast as possible is an activity that you choose to engage in because you enjoy it. That's it. So if you don't enjoy something or if it's uncomfortable or if it's, eh, it's a little you know, weird and I don't know what this is, don't play. Don't do it. Just watch and see if there is a moment that you can extract from watching other people do it. And or maybe a lot of times in our workshops, live at least, uh, people find an opportunity to step in midway through the game or an activity that's comfortable for them. So that's one way to um, make it inclusive in terms of you choose how you're going to play or how you're going to observe. Um, and so that's, that's one, uh, one thought around that. Uh, for sure, I think the research from um, from psychology and 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 and, and folks from, who define play does speak to that. It is a uh, really personal uh, engagement, personal activity that I want to choose when and how and how long to engage in it. And if we can emulate a little bit of that, not always uh, the, in the in learning and development fields, etc then we actually make it okay for the skeptic to sit on the sideline for a little while. Uh, as long as we're including them in the debrief, what did you observe? What did you notice about other people? What did you notice about yourself? Uh, and so there are some uh, components there uh, to think about. Any other thoughts, Laura, or uh, making sure, Tina, I'm answering your question? Yes. Yeah, I think the only other thought I have is I'm just thinking back to the work that uh, we did with Options for All. It's a nonprofit in San Diego um, that helps adults with developmental disabilities uh, get jobs. And we actually did a program, a play-based learning program from them. And I'm just thinking back to the ways we had to adapt a lot of the games we do to make them work for more people. Can't think of specific examples, unfortunately, but I just remember it was a challenge. Uh, to, to alter games to make them available to people. And a lot of it was just accepting if they, I mean, we had folks who were blind, were deaf, and with groups of people who couldn't talk. Yep. So really trying to find ways for everyone to engage and make it safe for everyone to engage was a challenge, but it had a lot to do with just encouraging and accepting, like the group celebrating whatever the person tried. Um, so just having that openness to like, hey, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just do yeah. something like just do something and we're going to support you. Uh, so yeah. that's a lot of it as well. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think that from that perspective, that really is about there is no real hard and fast rule uh, on this is a playful activity and this is a purposeful activity. You can kind of go you can flow back and forth as needed to meet the needs of the participant, of the learner. And I think that's what the versatility of play is. If you can think of yourself as a designer, at, you know, Tina, you said, like, well, I don't know what the next word is, is des the experience design versus this, and what's the catchphrase? Well, either way, no matter what we're calling it, if we can think about what the participant's experience is so that we can try to help them achieve something closer than when they first 
entered, then that's what we're going for. And for us, play is versatile enough that we can kind of shift it so quickly on the, in the moment that we can then see what shows up and then adapt it as quickly as possible. Uh, one last, que one more question. Then we're going to play a game. Manisha says, "What is the difference between adaptability and flexibility?" Ooh, good, good question. question. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good question. I'm kind of stumped a little bit on that. I would say my first reaction. I haven't. I don't have my uh, Webster uh, dictionary out. Um, I think in some ways, uh, to me, if I'm flexible, uh, then I'm willing to kind of make this plan shift and, and change the way that I'm doing things. For me, adaptability is much more of an in the moment skill that I need to call upon. Uh, how do I react to things? Um, I'm not sure if I'm reacting with flexibility. I can be flexible once I collect some information on what I need to do and make that shift. For me, adaptability is like, am I able to adapt right now? What's my attitude to change? Uh, and I think that, you know, they're related by for sure. Um, and again, Manisha, that's just me making stuff up off the top of my head right now. So uh, that's my first reaction to the difference. And I may want to do some homework on that. Yeah. If anyone has a thought about the difference, you can put it in the chat box. Yeah, too. please do. Uh, how do you think Good about trust. it? Because these questions of distinctions between words, I love having those conversations because we don't know the answer. We just have our thoughts on it. Yeah. And it's a great question, uh, finding distinctions between words. So if you have a thought, feel free to share it in the chat. But I think it's time to play. I think we got to play. Yeah. Okay, okay, so this game is called New Choice. Laura, you want to uh, teach us how to how to play this, and uh, want to do demo in front of the room here? Yeah, absolutely. So Liz, uh, you're gonna you're gonna help us out again. Sounds uh, awesome. So this this, uh, this game's called New Choice. Uh, it's another improv game, and the way it's gonna work is that Akshay and I are gonna be acting out a scene. Okay, so you're gonna be in your breakout rooms with two people acting out a scene, and we're gonna give you the prompt for the scene right now. Okay, it's gonna be a brother and a sister at a wedding having a conversation. Okay, that's your that's what the, the scene is gonna be. And Akshay and I are gonna act out that scene, we're gonna improvise it. And Liz, as the third person in the room, Liz, whenever you want, after mm -hmm. one of us says a line, you can say new choice. Mm -hmm. And whoever just said the last line has to change what they said to something different. Okay. Now, Liz, you can say new choice as many times in a row as you want. Mm -hmm. So if you say new choice and I say something else, you can tell me that I have to make a new choice again. And mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna do the scene for a couple minutes. Okay. okay. Awesome. Ready, Akshay? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready, yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, you, you know, come on. It's time to walk down the aisle. You're late, you're late. I know, my car, I got pulled over by the cops, Jerry. Yeah, that's no excuse. I mean, we have like 150 people waiting in the sidelines here to be like, where's the bride here? Come on, we got to hustle down the aisle. I mean, you know, we're on a tight ship schedule over here. New choice. We're, 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 we're in the middle of the ocean here, uh, you know, on this cruise ship. Uh, you know, we, we, we can only be here for so long. I know. Yeah, well, I, the car wreck was the problem, right? And then I had to do the little paddle boat on my way out here. And Jerry, why are you wearing a pink suit? Wait a second. Is this not the color that you told me in the email like last week? This is literally what you sent me. I can share the email with you that you sent me. Pink Good suit, choice. pink tie. Good choice. This is what everybody else is wearing in the entire wedding. Everybody's wearing pink, and I'm not going to look different than anyone else. Well, I don't have anything pink. Do you have anything I can borrow? New choice. Do you have a hat I can wear? Sure. Yeah, I have a hat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've never. I, I mean, it's up to you. You're, I mean, you're, you're walking down and you want to wear a hat on top of the veil, on top of the dress. I mean, it's, you know, it's your choice. Uh, we have to I guess. get, I, I need a hat, you know? Okay. Okay. I, I, I got a hat. I got a hat. Just so you know, it's pink. Perfect. So, 
Okay, we're going to stop right there. Thanks for playing, Laura. Uh, yay. Thanks, Liz. Yay. For I was just going to say, you know, there's also a pink bunny flipper outfit, you know, the you know, yeah, Christmas story as, a, as an additional so, option for that pink suit. <laughs> so this is a fun game. I mean, Laura and I kind of, a, you know, can do it fast and things like that. You know, have some fun with it. You don't have to go as fast as we did necessarily or come up with things that are smart and kooky. Again, one of the things here is it's not about trying to be funny. Or trying to come up with something cute and smart in this conversation. Just have a regular conversation. Your scenario is going to be exactly the same. A brother and sister at a wedding. Um, and it doesn't matter who they are. Uh, and so you start the conversation and see what it feels like when you're asked to make a new choice. Uh, to change on the spot. Right? And that's what we want you to kind of have that experience and see how you deal with it. So... Off the table talks, you go, have some fun, take a rotation, uh, take some turns sometimes. Laura, any other thoughts? Yeah, there? yeah. I'm just thinking um, groups of three, I think, would work best. However, if you need to be in a group of four, that's okay, too. Uh, but groups of three to do this, so you can kind of rotate through the roles. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. okay, everyone. Have some, fun. have some fun. You can find the link in the alerts. See you soon. Have fun. All right, welcome back, welcome back. Got people still coming in. Uh, we hope you had fun. If you wanna write in the chat box, uh, just kind of share how your experience was. We're also gonna pull a couple people up on stage to tell us how it was. But just so we can hear from more people, just go ahead and write, go ahead and write in the chat box. Tell us something about your experience. How was it for you? And then if we can get a couple people with, I gotta see some hearts, that's great. Uh, if we can get a couple people to just raise their hand if you're willing to come up on stage and talk a little about how your experience was in the game of New Choice. Just go ahead and raise your hand if you're willing to come up on stage. Or like Akshay said, we'll have to just pull you on here somehow. <laughs> All so, right. Here it ah, here's Eric. Hi, Eric. Yeah. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm great. You want to tell us a little about your experience? Yeah, uh, I've I've played New Choice before, um, and I love this game. I, I think it's a great game, and our uh, my table was really really good at playing the game with me, um, and just the the ability to create more interesting choices when you just have to come up with something on the fly and spit out whatever is on your mind just creates something that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise, even with like actual thinking and planning. I love that point. So there's something about the new choice that actually creates more creativity. Mm -hmm. like. I, I agree. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. hundred percent. I love that. And, and that application, if you think about it, right? So how often do we see someone telling us we need to make a new choice or this needs to change as, okay, great. Like, let me see what I can be more creative about, right? I think that's a, a great point that oftentimes we don't see it like that. This game is the practice of that. Anything else in your group that felt hard or fun or anything else that happened? Um, uh, what, one thing that I uh, like about new choice is when you really get when you do multiple of them in a row when you you go to your second option and then you get new choice again and then you're like even more it's like exponentially more frantic and yeah. that really gets you get the most punchiest uh responses when you're on like your fourth new choice and you're just like uh this and it's ends up working out great in the end Awesome. Thank you, Eric, for sharing that. Actually, any thoughts to add on to, to, on to what Eric said? No, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Eric. Excellent. Bye, Eric. Thank you. Anyone else who wants to, to come up and, and share anything about the game of New Choice, how it was for you? Simply raise your hand and we'll, we'll get you right up on stage. All right. Uh, no, no worries. Thank you so much for playing the, the game New Choice. 
And we hope it gave you an opportunity to kind of pay attention to how you respond to having to just come up with new things, right? If there's hesitation there, was there any judgment of the idea you shared? I know I did that. I was like, oh, that wasn't the best thing I could have said. Right. But as soon as we start thinking, that's not the best thing I could have said. I'm no longer available in the scene. I'm no longer really listening to Akshay. I can't really build on what he's saying. And that's the kind of the next thing we're going to talk about uh, is how collaboration is so important, what it requires to be collaborative. And one of the things in this situation it required to be collaborative was presence. Mm -hmm. Right. So often those thoughts we think when we're asked to be adaptable, they can almost get in the way of us being present for what comes next. So try not to judge how you show up when you're in a new situation. Uh, try to just stay present and go with what happened and move on to the next thing. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about next is how do we work with people in the moment with what's available and what's coming up? Thanks, Laura. And I think one more thing on adaptability, I think I go back to something that I thought about is that it's almost like, you know, what's my, I like that you said, don't judge how you react to change mm. or how you, um, what your first thought is. Um, you, you always have an opportunity to make a new choice. Mm -hmm. And if we can just understand what our choice was, is that helpful? Can, does that help me and other people around me when changes come upon us or it's happening to us or we're leading it? And that adaptability skill is not about, uh, it's not about really kind of making the best choice. It's about making a choice and then deciding if that is serving everybody involved or not. And the ability to shift and think in that way is what the skill of adaptability is. Um, and so like Laura said, people get stuck and maybe even Eric said this, like the, first, the you know, once you get past your first alternative thought, it's like you don't have anything left. Uh, people get stuck in their own heads around what could be. And so we're hoping that playfulness is getting you to think about what's the last thing somebody said or did or what happened? And can I use that to inform how I react to it? So that's something to think about as we move forward. The last thing, as we talked about today, uh, as Laura said, is a collaboration. And the collaboration is kind of a loaded word, I think, uh, because there's so many different things that go into it, uh, such as, you know, structure and groups and uh, attitude and, uh, you know, planning. And there's lots of different things that can contribute to effective collaboration. And we've named a few things like, uh, you know, listening and being present, as we've mentioned here, um, you know, get, be, the ability to give people feedback or give each other feedback on how it's going, whether it's uh, serving everybody in the group, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, definitely this one's from the world of improv theater, um, which is saying yes and, and, and some of it, of it is really just saying yes first. I'm not, how quickly can I say yes? And, and we make this distinction Saying yes to a situation or someone doesn't mean you have to agree with them. It does mean you're accepting what's happening. So yes is accepting, not necessarily agreement. And I think that's a confusion point for people mm -hmm. when we see the language of the word yes. Um, it means that you're accepting of the situation and, and we'll do something with it. As opposed to, I agree with everything that you just did. Um, because the opposite of yes and is not no but, it's just yes but. Uh, and so that's an interesting point because when we, the amount of times we say the word but in our language all day, uh, keep a track of it. And us, what I do is in the live, I will correct myself. Um, if I say but, we're going to do this, I'll say, oh, I mean, and we're going to do that. The way we use language can help create the environment within which collaboration can occur or the, uh, the ability, the propensity for collaboration to exist on a perception level, whether or not you're hitting your outcomes or not, that's a different story. Uh, and I was just about to say, but uh, the ability to be able to hold that up and, and, and think through that. And then, you know, interestingly enough, it, this research that shows that uh, people who actually collaborate on a task versus being by themselves, you know, they, they stuck to the task longer. So almost, this is like, you know, well, it's better for accountability, left side of the loop, right? Productivity and accountability live on the left side of the loop, yet collaboration can be fun if we can practice the skill around how do we do it with other people in a very simplified way. And that's what we're going to do. One last game 
uh, for today. And that is, it's called uh, Human Machines. And we'll teach you how to play it. And then you're going to do one more game in your table talks here. Uh, and so this is simple, and yet it can feel uncomfortable. So Liz, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's part of our, our, a part of our group here. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. Uh, the three of us is going to demonstrate it like we did. And then you're going to go off and play it in your table talks. This is called uh, Human Machines. What you're going to do is one person will start. doesn't matter who. They're going to do a motion. Any motion that is repeatable, okay? So, for mm -hmm. example, I could do like this. doesn't matter what it is. Anything you do is correct, okay? Uh, I could do this. doesn't matter. Don't mm -hmm. change it like I just did. Just keep repeating one thing that you're doing. And you're also going to ascribe a sound to it, okay? So, boop, 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 boop. Boop, and I'm going to keep that sound going and keep that motion going. Then the next person, wherever they are ready, they're going to jump in and fill the space, even though it's virtual, with their own action and another sound of their own associated with their action. And the other person is going to do the same. And so, well, let's do a demonstration for them. And we're going to create a machine amongst the three of us. And it doesn't, we don't know what the machine is, but by the goal of this game, by the way, is to get everybody doing this action in motion, different ones, you're putting it together, and then you're coming back and you're going to tell us what your machine is. Okay, that's kind of what, what, what the goal is, if you, can, if you can do that. So here we go. So here's, here's what we're going to do. Ready? Uh, here, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start. Here we go. Boop, 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 boop. Swish, swish. Swish, 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 swish. Oh my gosh, we're amazing. This is awesome. Any ideas what this machine is? Anybody any have any ideas? I think we should demo it again so people can guess. Yeah, let's put in the chat box what do you think this machine is? Here we go. Swish, 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 swish. Swish, swish, swish. Washing machine team swish, is like a washing machine. Like, I love that. That's cool. Uh, it, it sounds like an MRI. I love it. Uh, wave oh, meter for this. Love it. So this is kind of the goal of the game here. Uh, we'd like to. Um, we'd like you to go off and create your own. Have some fun with it. The key here that we did, and that's what you're practicing, is that you know we just kind of jumped in and had some fun with it. We didn't change what other people are doing. We just built on each other. Um, even though it can be quite silly, it can be quite uncomfortable. So let's see how you feel. Go off. We'll come back and we may um, have you kind of think about what is your machine since we can't have three of you on stage at the same time showing us your machine. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll figure it out. But go off in table talks, have some fun with human machines, and come on back and we'll talk about the skill that you're practicing. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. Awesome, awesome. Okay, here we go. We're rolling back in. Um, we cannot wait to see one or two groups machines. And we I th we think we figured out how to have three or four people on stage with us. So, haha. -ha. Uh, so let's see if we can. It, 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 so uh, if you... Yeah, clap. <laughs> um, so I guess the question is, if if one person if one person can raise their hand, and then we have to tell us who's in your group, and we need to kind of tag them in. Uh, raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hand if you're ready to come on stage, and then we'll try and get the right. Shraddha's here. Thanks, Shraddha. And then you got to tell us who's in your group. Jennifer. So, we can bring them. so Jennifer's with me. Jennifer and Tina. Ah, Jennifer and Tina. Okay, it. Tina's here already. Okay, great. Jennifer, raise your hand, love. Okay, Jennifer. She's like, oh, do I have to do something? Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe I. Maybe one of us needs to leave. Let's see. I'll. How about I go? Let's see here. How do I get out of here? I shot him. I don't know how to get it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I uh, thought it was brilliant. Okay. I thought that, that hey, I was going to do work this way. Okay, sorry, okay. Jennifer. Tell us about tell us about that experience. How about that? Just tell us about your experience of making the machine, and we'll call uh, we'll call Shraddha back up to talk about it. If, if it's different experience doing that, it's comfortable, uncomfortable, silly. What, you know, what's the value of that? Well, um, fortunately, in our little group, we all have some kind of theater background. 
I think that really helped us with comfort levels. Um, and I can imagine somebody who might not be comfortable in that situation, but we kind of right. like rolled with it and, and made it work. It was a lot of fun. I enjoy things like that. Awesome. Awesome. What was your machine? Did you, did you name your machine eventually or no? Um, Tina said we were an old, what's that old car. I can't remember what old car you said. Old car. An El Camino okay. specifically. An El Camino. An El Camino. Ooh, I like it. That's, I like it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> love it. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Jennifer, in saying that there are certain people with certain backgrounds that are have um, a propensity to play or be playful. I think that's what you're saying when you said, you know, we have a theater background or we have kind of experience and, and some other folks have, have said that maybe. Um, and I think that does help. Uh, and so we, I'll talk about that in a moment as about as, as a related topic. But Shraddha, how about you? How was that experience for you? Um, or what, what are you walking away with? Uh, from it was that hilarious. My dog couldn't stop barking when he was <laughs> listening to me, to all of us. What's going on? What's happened you, to these humans? Yeah, yeah. And, and what, how do you think it's related to, you know, your workplace or how people kind of collaborate uh, in the workplace? Is there something that you're thinking about as you're as I'm asking that question? Um, I think uh, it's this game uh, particularly feels like um, it'll be a good way to get people to to join in and kind of be a part of yeah. the entire you know, craziness, whatever happens at workplace and instead yeah. of pulling themselves out and, you know, this is a good way. It's it's like, it's a non-threatening way to kind of introduce that, that it's okay. Even if you're looking silly, it's all right. We're all looking silly together. Let's just yes. get into it. <laughs> That's it. That's actually it. In fact, some, you know, when we talked about the skeptics and that, you know, kind of people who were, you know, Tina asked the question, people who are not as comfortable engaging or playing etc the other component of any of these games or any playful activity can be what you just said Shraddha is that uh, you know everybody's kind of having this experience at the same time it's a shared experience and that can create safety in the discomfort of it which yeah. then enables everybody to be on a learning journey. People have different starting points. However, uh, it, it really does equalize the playing field with regards to we all don't know what the hell this thing is. Um, none of us have the, the silver bullet here. And so I think that's that can be permission granting or enabling uh, for other people as well to see how collaboration can be a playful and a place where we can learn how to collaborate, not just do it and expect us to get it done the first time. So thanks yeah. for sharing that, Strada. Appreciate you uh, sharing your experience and appreciate your dog uh, uh, experiencing that as well. Uh, clearly wanted to be part of, oh, look at that. <laughs> of a, a King Charles, a King Charles. Um, beautiful. Thank you, Strada. Thank you so much. Well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, so I think one of the things we want to we want to kind of think about um, is thinking about you know not just collaboration, but the story that I have is you know my background's in medical devices, and um, I used to lead a medical device team and kind of launching FDA products through FDA, and and many it really did require collaboration across different uh, you know marketing and chemists and analytics and blah blah blah, um, and and many people were not very playful. Uh, and I think that's interesting because in some ways I found a couple of people in my group that were open to being playful, open to having a collaborative, productive conversation on the left side of the loop, and then also spending an extra minute or three messing around and, and connecting around something. And one of the things I tell in a story, not today, is that one of those moments that we had in my in my medical device experience where we were messing around with some random thing about my funky socks and her funky socks. And we were showing where do we buy them and how do we, you know, we're, we're, back in the day where funky socks were like, oh, not many people wore them in corporate America. Um, and, and randomly, we, we came upon an idea while we were talking about socks 
uh, that then we march down into the lab to talk to the chief chemist, a 56 year old person with 30, 40 patents on his belt. And we had a discussion not about socks now, but about the idea that came from that playful discussion and then ended up shifting the gears around the priority of projects that were related to what we came up with. Uh, and that ended up being a product, you know, down six, six months down the road that we ended up putting into the FDA. Um, and, you know, it's funny because I think if we had not had the openness of being playful and talking about our socks, how it's not that we would have never uh, maybe seen that opportunity. However, maybe we saw it faster or maybe we had the ability to share it faster or talk about it sooner. Um, and so it's not a slam dunk, it's organic. Playfulness can lead to creativity in organic ways. However, I think there is that component around all three of these skills today, creativity, adaptability, and collaboration. A playful person is more likely to be open and have propensity to actually practice these skills without them knowing, which is what Laura was alluding to, um, before. And our final discussion point today, and Tina, did you have something to share here? No, or, I was just saying, no, that's amazing. Just agreeing. <laughs> yeah. And the final thing we want to share is something maybe more specific. You may or may not have heard of these before, um, but uh, these are called play preferences. We've outlined five of them here. There are probably six or seven of them, but uh, we think they're related. So we wanted to simplify here. And let me explain what these are. And then you're going to do one final table talk to discuss it and we'll close out the session. Uh, and that is every one of us has a propensity or a preference to play. And we just don't necessarily call it that, or we don't necessarily know that we have it and we should probably should do more of it. So social play on the top, these are people who like to connect with others, like to uh, kind of talk with others, be with others, experience things with others. This I tell this story funny because from my background in corporate America, this is the the person in the cubicle who takes a break from work by standing up and walking to someone else's cubicle and having a chit chat. And that's them on break. And so for me, that's a person who has a preference on social play. They like to hang out and talk and have some fun and they get energized in social play experiences. Creative play on the right is those people who uh, use media to express an idea. What do, I mean, what do I mean by that? It means either canvas or a piece of paper or doodling or painting or graphic design. Uh, things that you can express your creative thoughts, your creativity in a visual or a, uh, a written format even. Uh, and that, that those people have a creative play preference. Um, you know, I find myself sometimes if I'm on a phone call and I'm on a hold for like ever, I start doodling. And trust me, I've got whiteboards all around. Whiteboard over here. There's a whiteboard right here. You can't even see it, but it's right there, right in front of me. Um, I've got plenty of places to scratch and scribble. Uh, and that doesn't mean I, I love doing it. It just means I can use it to help me focus or help me gain energy. Physical play. I know I have this one, and that is people who like to mobilize their bodies. The classic one is, you know, just exercising. Uh, I want to or I love exercising because it gives me energy. Now, smaller versions of that can just be I want to go for a walk, a, a, a walk on a meeting, a, you know, just because that's going to change my energy and change my space to think differently. Um, and so moving your body so that your your right left brain and your whole body is connected to what you're doing uh, can energize you for managing your energy as we mentioned before or all of these can lead to more creative moments uh, and that's both of those can be served in these uh, play preferences imaginative play this one i really like uh, and that is in school when i was growing up i was told stop daydreaming you know, hey, focus, hey, look up here, hey, hey. Um, and actually, imaginative play is, daydreaming is an activity that is imaginative play. If you kind of stare up at the clouds and space out and start to see kind of a disparate concepts come together or nature or, uh, you know, anything really, it also can be about uh, a little bit related to mindfulness. 
uh, getting in touch with your thoughts uh, and understanding what that means. And a lot of times creative moments can come when disparate thoughts or concepts come together. And that's what imaginative play is. I would also say, uh, if I can add something about imaginative play, some of us are a little too good about, uh, too good at this. Uh, I know for myself as someone who's really has a really, really powerful imagination, it's beautiful. Uh, but then I can also sometimes make up things in my head that I think are happening, uh, but they're not actually happening. <laughs> so yeah. um, yeah. some of these have an Achilles heel. I'd say imaginative play is, is one of them. Uh, it's a gift and then sometimes also a curse. Uh, yeah, them. not to be missing with a gift, which is what's good. The chat box is getting filled up. <laughs> um, so I think that's great. And I think one of the things that I think about with play preferences is as long as they're connected to the, our model, when you think about play and productivity, how can we utilize them to fuel our productivity in a workplace or in the goal that I'm trying to achieve, maybe in career advancement, in interviewing for new jobs? You know, that's really what we're asking you to think about, not just to start doing it and see what comes. Try to be more purposeful and intentional. Um, the last one is object play, and that is manipulating uh, objects. The simplest thing is, and I can't do this, um, is this twirling the pen, you know, who, I can't even, look at me, I can't even demonstrate it. Um, you know, this twirling the pen, people get focused from that. But also it could be as big as, you know, objects such as Legos, you know, I always carry this around here, this is always at my desk, you know, just kind of tinkering around. Uh, people who have cars, I know some of my friends kind of like to tinker in their cars in their garage, um, just like to do stuff with their hands. That is a form of play for them, and that can lead to creative moments or managing energy. So our question for you is in the chat box, at least right now, which ones of these do you think you connect with? And then we want you to take you off into the Play Preferences Table Talks to have a quick three-minute discussion around which ones do you do and how, and how do you use them? And I'll say one last thing, and that is that some people are very focused, have focused play preferences. They only have one or two. That's okay. Just identify and own that. And some people are much more versatile. Versatile players have multiple different um, options uh, to them. And, and that's okay too. Think about how you actually use these. What activities do you do? And how can you be more intentional around participating with these play preferences, exercising them so that creativity, adaptability, and collaboration are already coming to you without you having to think about it. Off to table talks for about three minutes, Liz. Thank you. And we'll see you back here talking about this. All right. I see a super question up on there. Uh, just talk about the activities that you love to engage in. What do you do that's that's playful and fun? And what's the value of that for you? What is it? What is participating in those things do for you, uh, especially as it relates maybe to creativity, adaptability, or collaboration. How do you practice those things in there? Uh, so yeah, you're just gonna talk about how you love to play and get to know some people that way. Love it, all right. Let's do it. Okay, question marks. Do, 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 table talks. All righty, everyone should have the announcement and have fun. All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for going and having conversations around play preferences. We appreciate it. Um, we're gonna just kind of close out our session uh, with a, a quick activity, and we want we want to invite you want to invite you to just think about um, you know how what your playfulness is and how to utilize it, how to make sure to use it in ways that can help you in your career advancement, um, in in new careers and new situations. Um, and, and I think telling stories around how play is useful for you and what it's helped you accomplish is kind of one way to do that and to practice that. So we invite you to do that as you move forward. Final game for you, Laura, take it away and uh, we'll close out the session. What do you got here? Yeah, so thank you everyone so much for being here today, for being willing to play, for sharing your thoughts on play. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to have such, a, such an active audience uh, to participate in this. Uh, and so for our final activity today, we're not going to be able to see you doing it, but I'm definitely going to invite you to do it because I actually just invented this game last week on my own because I needed to do something fun because I was very stressed out. So I'm going to invite you all to play this game now. So you're going to need a paper and pen. And what I want you to do is just take like one minute 
and write down all the things that get in the way of you having fun, you playing. So just write down what gets in the way, all the things on a piece of paper, what gets in the way of you playing uh, and you having fun. And I'm gonna write it, I'm gonna do this as well. And we'll just give you like 30 seconds, 45 seconds to do this. Do, 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 do. Permission. Too busy. Ready. Give people another couple seconds. All right, great. Wherever you are, you can you can stop writing there. Hopefully, you haven't thought of too many things. What I'm going to invite you to do now is rip out that piece of paper. Take that piece of paper, rip it out, and you're going to crumple it up into a ball. You're going to crumple your paper up into a ball. It's a lovely sound. If we were cats, we'd be going crazy. Uh, and so, what we're going to do is we're going to give you one minute. And what you're going to try to do is see how long, how many hits can you get with that piece of paper. So I'd be like, one, two, three. All right, so see the maximum number of hits that you can get in one minute. Go. And the, oh, and the metaphor for this for me is really about, like, can I even just, like, have some fun with the serious things in my life, which is written on this paper? Uh, can I even find play and its utility in moments that maybe are not, uh, as useful or utilitarian. By the way, I'm still going, just so you know. I'm crushing this game. Oh, I just dropped it. <laughs> Does that work? Does that count? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, 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 changing the rules here. Um, it's in both hands. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, well, listen, uh, we want to thank you for all for hanging out with us, for playing with us, uh, finding ways that play can serve you uh, in small ways and big ways. Um, and uh, we, we'd love that you hung out with us the whole time and appreciate it. And of course, appreciate the opportunity to share our passion for our work with you all. Laura, any thoughts uh, for closing out here? Yeah, yeah, just one thing about that game. What I, what I love about that is to me, it says, look at all these things in my way and I just overcame all of them, right? Like yeah. it can be that easy to get over our blocks to doing something fun. We're like, oh, what did I write on there? Stress, I don't have time, right? I have to get this work done. You can overcome all that in 30 seconds of just hitting a piece of paper around, right? Those barriers, they're not as high as we think, right? You just get out of your head and go do something. And that's what we want to leave you with today. Uh, yeah, to continue practicing play in your life. Yeah. And then you eventually have to open that back up and make sure you take care of those things, Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, thank there you so that. much everybody and uh we have this uh, qr code here for feedback we always love feedback to learn about what what you learned what what's going well so take a picture or you get on there and while you're on a uh, respite i think there's a break coming up uh but thank yep. you liz thank you tina thank you everyone for uh, allowing us to share our passion for our absolutely work. awesome thank you so much for being part of our learning in the mix and getting us all kicked up with play thank you so much akshay and laura and Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone.